Freelance basketball journalist Jordan Liggins Robinson had an interview with WNBA and women's basketball legend Cheryl Swoops. And she was speaking to her about Caitlin Clark breaking her record. And this stood out to me because I remember when Davis from Detroit Mercy was going to break Pete Maravich's record. And I remember the backlash because he had a COVID year. So it's, oh man, he played five years. Uh, He said he even got, he had people calling to make sure that he couldn't get into that extra tournament where he would have got extra play and broke Pete Maravich's record because they just didn't want to see it. And I remember even on TV when they would speak about it, on NBA radio when they would speak about it, they would always mention how it was taking him extra time. So it really didn't mean anything anyway. It was, you know, a joke. You know, they would just laugh it off. Ironically, we get a similar situation with Caitlin Clark, and I never heard anybody on TV say, hey, man, but, it, you know, back then, they only had five games. Now they have six games. You know, they never added the, that context to it. It was just, man, she passed Cheryl Swoops. And I know sometimes it may seem like if Caitlin ever comes across a video or something, it's not or even with Sabrina before, it's not you. It's more so you're just being used by the media at that moment. So we have to address you. But this is the media bias that we speak of because when it's a white legend, oh, we have to uphold the history and we have to give context so you know that, you know, this guy is nowhere near Pete. Okay, you know, even if he broke the record, it took him longer. You know, context mattered at that point. But we don't want to give context for Cheryl Swoops. The disrespect for the WNBA black legends is just crazy. You know, they'll, they're they quick to just throw Tarasi in our face or, you know, any of them of the white legends, they want to prop them up above the black legends. But it's like we need to really tell the story of the black uh, women's basketball legends and really uphold their history because that's been a failure of the sport and they don't understand that Luca's a great player but his shoe is not gonna you know it's only gonna do so much Rihanna Stewart great player but it's only going to do so much. They still don't get it, want to come back with Sabrina. The shoe is only going to do so much. You have to attach to the culture that pumps life in America if you want something to go. Like, the brands that get it, this is why they pay these rappers and athletes so much money because they understand who's the lifeline of culture. And if you don't tell the story of these great black women and you just constantly put people over them, you're not going to get the boom. Angel Reese, what is she? This is where you get the boom. They want the um, moxie. Well, let's listen to Cheryl Swoops and hear her perspective on this. Even the host, why would you say say it? You know, it took her actually. It almost it almost sound like you kind of being combative. Now, as we play it on, we see that she isn't. But 
it almost made it feel like you was trying to imply that maybe she was, you know, hating or something. She not. I like that she says it because a lot of times we get afraid to say things we don't want to, especially when you get older, you don't want to seem like a hater. But a fact is a fact. Give her the same respect that people was giving Pete Maravich when they put context to history. And I think with the WNBA legends and the women's basketball legends, they feel even more a type of way like she put a 47 in a national championship game and you got somebody to, when they see talk about Caitlin Clark's 40 point oh we've never seen nothing like she pulling from three and all that go look at Cheryl Swoop's highlights like so that's why I said with Stephen A we have to be careful when speaking on something that we're not truly in because you're on TV constantly and you talk bat men's basketball, people will take you as a credible voice, which in this context, you're not credible to be saying it's much better than it was. You could say it's great when we put the light on this, that we got the show that we got and it was amazing to see or something like that. But to, to diminish the past, when you're not fully, you wasn't fully paying attention to the basketball of old to even know what type of progress has been made. So I just feel like it's wrong to be speaking on it. So let's take a look at this interview a little bit more. She just throwing out that like she dropped 47 in the championship. Like when they talk about when they was like, oh man, she just broke a record. They never mentioned that. And that's what's wrong with media today. That's why I say you need racial balance with these announcers because I feel like a Carolyn Peck would have mentioned something like that. And at the end, she gave Kayla her respect, but she just also wanted to be clear. In her era, she was doing similar things, and you're only going to be, like I seen somebody in the comments like, uh, well, the competition wasn't as good. Well, even if you feel that way about a certain era, you're only good as your era. So it's not like we brought her from 2023 and put her in that era with some different skill set. She didn't have like some advantage over that the other players didn't have. Like, so she was still the best of what was provided back then. It's not like she's coming from 2023 and playing in 1993. It's still the same access to development um, what they could see, what they could watch, and how they could work on their game. But I want to go and see if I can find when Pete Maravich record was. Let me see. Pete Maravich. Well, his record was about to be broken. I mean, all of the backlash that I seen was ridiculous. Hold on, let me see. P. Maravich, he averaged 44.2. Hold on, let me type in P. Maravich, Detroit. Okay, Antonio Davis and Detroit Mercy will face Youngstown tonight in the second round of the Horizon League Tournament. Davis need 26 points to break Pete Maravich's D1 record. So, 
Let's go in the comments. See, was there any backlash? Okay, here we go. Pete played 60 less games, please. Pistol Pete only played 83 games. Antonio has played 144. He played five seasons of college basketball. Uh, let me see. And, and that's what I'm talking about. So people were very quick, as they should be, to point that out. I'm just saying the same energy needs to be put towards this situation. So let me know what you think in the comments.